Faith Seeker and or its affiliates are not responsible for any strange phenomena that may occur during or after listening to this podcast, which may include the following. Heightened senses of awareness, psychic abilities, UFO sightings, alien contact, time loss, out-of-body experiences, ringing in the ears, ESP, lucid dreaming, increased synchronicities, astral projection, telepathy, stronger intuition, levitation, miraculous healings, and or remote viewing. Please be advised to listen at your own discretion. What's up, ladies and gentlemen? I'm your host, True Seeker. This is the True Seeker Podcast. Thank you guys for joining me. Um, thank you to all the new listeners that we have. The numbers are increasing with every episode. Really cool. Uh, within the last week, we moved up to the number two spot in the spirituality category on iTunes. That's a big deal. Thank you, guys. Couldn't do it without you. Thank you, everybody who is sharing and supporting the the work, the podcast, the music, everything that I'm a part of. Um, thank you for everybody who is supporting over at um, Patreon. Uh, everybody uh, who is supporting, you get uh, extra podcasts. You get access to something new that we're starting here, which is called the School of the Mystics. We're doing it every Thursday night. It's kind of going to be like the hands-on part of the podcast to where everybody who... Uh, is reaching out. I'm getting emails and messages in my inbox daily of people's lives who are being changed simply by uh, being a part of this show, finding this show, and it's changing your life. It's not me. I'm just a part of the collective, uh, the energy, uh, the awakening that's happening globally. I just got the phone with a friend of mine who I've been doing this with for a long time and just mentioned the fact that they used to get on to me for talking about mushroom encounters uh, openly. They used to get on to me for talking about aliens and UFOs and psychic abilities openly because you have your personal life and then you have your professional life, your job and your family and friends and all that stuff. And I couldn't separate the two. Like, it's powerful to me. I can't, like, find the keys to to um, happiness, the keys to of something that is tangible that you can apply to your life and not share it with you. So they used to get on to me for talking about this stuff. But now I understand why the podcast is flourishing because I'm talking about this stuff. I guess resonating with a lot of people. And the reason it is because not a lot of people are talking about it from the position that I approach it from. Well, I come from a religious background, dealing with Christianity, coming out of the church, still have a faith in, in Jesus, still have a faith in Christ, haven't forsaken that. But it's the fact that I can still be a Christian. I could still be a follower of God and use psilocybin. Um, different friends who are, you know, they, they smoke marijuana marijuana um we can be christians and talk about ufos and aliens in a good light and not have to demonize everything so i've seen that being vocal about my truth and what it's led to the numbers are increasing man i I understand what's happening thank you guys for supporting those of you guys who want to get on board become a part of the school of the mystics what we're doing every thursday night 7 p.m central uh head on over to patreon.com backslash true seeker you can sign up from any level from a dollar 
five dollars, ten dollars, whatever you're able to do, anything helps. And at any level of giving, you get access. Thursday nights, we're going to be doing hands-on activation, prayer, meditation, um, and we're just going to be being uh, candid and open with one another in a, in a private setting where it's not going to be broadcast live or nothing like that. It's going to be something private. So if that interests you and you're looking to build with a community. Uh, this, I see the chat chat room filling up already. I know a lot of you guys are going to be there. Adam Starseed Bay, working with him. He's going to be doing some teachings and activations as well with me. So make sure you do that. You also get access to my entire discography, which is 10 plus albums and all of the new music. And I'm uploading new music pretty much weekly. So if you want that stuff, patreon.com backslash truth seeker. Thank you guys from the bottom of my heart. It means the world that you guys believe in what I'm doing. Our guest today Someone who reached out to me, I checked out her, her website and, and her work, and I felt like she would be a perfect uh, addition uh, to the podcast repertoire. I feel like she has something beautiful to bring to the table, especially when it comes to learning how to activate and uh, your psychic abilities. We're all born with them. These are energies that we've been feeling since we were children. And a lot of people don't know what's going on. You think it's all in your head. You think it's your imagination or your mind playing tricks on on you. But really what it is is you're sensitive to the other realms. Crystal Sunshine, welcome to the show. How are you? Hey, thanks for having me. I'm so uh, I'm so honored to be here today. I'm I'm super excited. And man, I just love your story. I love your story. I completely resonate with it. And I love that you're speaking your truth. And I'm always preaching that it's it's matter of like when you live your truth, when you completely are integrated with your higher self, with your mind, body, spirit, when you're completely integrated, it's like you can't you can't resist not speaking what's on your mind. So so I'm really honored to be here. So I really admire you. So thank you having me no thank you for coming on the show that i think that's really where the power is and i've mentioned it in several episodes back but um looking at certain people and it doesn't matter what your calling is or what you're drawn to do um i have friends who are doing uh what they love to do for a living they're doing what they were born to do they're what they were destined to do and it kind of moved me to envy in a good way an envy to uh, do something about it. Cause you know, I was driving a truck. I was, you know, I was yeah. working for somebody else. So, uh, but I knew there was something greater for me and, um, and it, it, it moved me to envy. So to see people doing what they love to do, speaking their truth with no repercussions and just being themselves, that right there is, is attractive. And, uh, it, it should move us all to envy, right? Yeah, well, it, it's aspire and inspire, mm-hmm. right? I mean, that's what what's going on. And yeah, and you hope that like you completely inspire me. Like I was listening to your story about like how you gave up that gig and I completely resonated with it because that's my story too. And really like the more that you connect with people, like you realize like we all share so many similar stories, right? I'm in California, you're in Alabama, but here we are like completely meeting on such, you know, um, a similar level. You know, my family's from the South as well. It's like, you know, I, I gave up my corporate gig, you know, I was tired of, you know, making donuts for someone else and Mm -hmm. like someone else like dictating my life. And, We had similar stories. I was a, I was a private flight attendant. And so, you know, anytime you're in transportation, like, (laughs) like Derek and I, it's like, you know, your days could be 48 hours long and you're just going and going and going and you do, it's easy to lose sight of like what your true desire is, you know, cause you're so tired and you're just living someone else's truth. And I was just ready. Like, um, you know, I had a very financially stable job, you know, I was making a lot of money and I, like my soul was not happy. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, I was not able to be who I was at home. It was like, it was two different people. And I think a lot of people really live that story where it's like, they've got the work persona and then they have the home life persona. And it's really hard to be happy unless all of those are integrated. And so, uh, yep. yeah, I could not be happier. I mean, the financial struggle is totally different. 
but like I feel that I it's worth it now though versus on the, right? when you're struggling on the other way working at a job you don't want to be at and then juggling bills versus okay this is why I'm put here let me juggle these bills I know it's looking crazy but you know where there's a will there's a way you know right and you end up just having faith right like it's all just yep. gonna work out you know it's like when you're on the right path and you know that and like you said it doesn't have to be that you're in metaphysics or anything yeah, like that exactly like when you're on the right path like you're no matter what you're doing that yeah. it, it just kind of comes easy and even yeah. though like there's certain struggles it's like you just kind of end up having faith that it's like no you know what it feels so right it feels so good and i know it's all gonna work out right <laughs> yeah one of the biggest um w- ones for me was um going to a tattoo shop there's a tattoo yeah. shop over here in daphne um called the bell rose tattoo and they did a lot of my work and me and my wife oh, and and um just to see the spirit there they're happy they're doing what they were put here to do and it's like man i gotta go to work tomorrow for and I, i'm dreading it i don't want to go there i remember like sunday evenings just like that dread like oh my god i don't want this day to end just because i had to go and and, and and clock in at two o'clock in the morning is what i was doing this is insane yeah, just completely acts up your solar plexus, right? Yeah. I look back at that time because same thing. I'd get up at 2.30 in the morning to leave for work. And I now look back like the holidays this year was like a real reflection time for me to like look back on like what my life was a year or two years ago. And it felt so foreign, almost like I had stepped into another body, right? Like now I'm finally who I am. And I look back a year or two ago and I'm like, wow, that anxiety energy I was running, same thing. Like I didn't want to, I knew I had to go to bed early because I had to get up so early, but it's like, you just don't want that day to end because you don't really want to... (laughs) The reality is and how sad is that and that's really like how well mainly america really lives yeah um, yeah and, it, it, <laughs> and, and, and i think the reason we're we're talking about this we're rejoicing in this is because this is something attainable for everyone um yeah. if you have to cut your bills back if you have to uh w- whatever you have to do to kind of minimize that cost of living per month drop it down and then take that step of faith do it when the, the timing is right i say do it when the timing was right i was trying to do it and then was kind of kicked off kind of <laughs> kind of forced into it but, yeah, uh, but what that is that was divine intervention right <laughs> it, that that happens for a lot of people because some of us yep. are too scared to kind of step out of that boat so we have to be pushed but yeah, um we- It'll help. Sometimes it helps. It, all of a sudden, if you notice like something abrupt, if you have an abrupt change, I always think that's divine timing because mm-hmm. you want to get off that pot. <laughs> yep. I'm, it's, it's too comfortable. Like it's too, like I, I had a certain go. I had a certain number in mind of like patron supporters. Okay. If yeah. my patron supporters uh, take the place of my paycheck, then I can do it full time. And I'm nowhere close to that. You know what I'm saying? Especially when it, when I first started. Um, but now everybody's coming out the woodwork to support. So right. it's awesome. But you have this, this, this perfect, the way of like an easy, smooth transition. And it's usually yeah. not like that. That's the whole step of faith, the whole trust in God, you know? That's it. Yeah. What I always teach is uh, like when I, uh, I have a class on manifestation and what I always teach is don't worry. You can't worry about the how. You yeah. only focus on the what, exactly. right? Like you're focusing on the how, like I've got to have, you know, X amount of supporters, right? Yeah. You are totally focused on the how and not the what, right? So if you can like focus on the what and it's all going to work out, like the how in between, you know, that's when kind of spirit just kind of takes over and, you know, the universe kind of works its magic because it's never what you set yourself up to, to, to pursue, to want, I guess that how is never really how you came up with it mm-hmm. <laughs> right. um i think the, the two greatest uh days in a per- person's life is when uh, you know the day that you're born and then the day that you find out why you were born what you were put here to do you know and um and it, it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't matter what it is and if, if you're a want to podcast if you want to be a healer so many people who are watching they have the gift of healing and, and those abilities they haven't even stepped out yet you know what i'm saying so that's why us talking about what what this podcast is designed to do practical ways for you to do that for you to step out financially from under a job and, and, and do that or to try to start getting clients you got to start somewhere everybody's in different uh places in this walk so um that, that's what it's about. It's about recognizing the energy where you are with the timing. Um, so many people are empathic, but you can, and, and it's fighting against them. 
They can't right? go out in public. They can't go to Walmart because they feel the energies. But yes. when once you're able to work with those energies and respond to it, you can essentially see miracles be done in the marketplace in Walmart in the doctor's office wherever you are and once you feel those energies discern it and kind of see what they need what that person needs even if it's just a kind word like you can be so sensitive that everywhere you go you bring about change and so that's why um, we're doing this podcast today let's talk a, a little bit about that how did the psychic abilities and things like that start in your life was it something that you were experiencing as a child many people do yeah, well, you know, all of us experience it as children, you know, because it's really, it's our innate ability. It's who we are. It's just like learning how to walk. It's part of our body. Yep. We have an entire chakra, our sixth chakra, that's completely dedicated to clairvoyance. You know, I mean, we are designed to do this. And it's just, we, um, most of us, I mean, there's a small percentage that, you know, we, um, where parents have nurtured their children to allow them to develop that over time but most of us don't you know most of our parents teach us you know what their their version of success is you know how to be an external human being not so much an internal human being you know when they teach us how to walk when they teach us how to talk they're not teaching us how to develop our, our third eye they're not teaching us how to communicate telepathically you know it's not but I think that we're starting to change that. Yeah. I don't think it's our lifetime or, you know, our children's lifetime, but I do think that we're, you know, the movement that's really changing that. But yeah, we all have it as children. And I was one of those kids that um, uh, I just knew everything, like my clear cognizance, which is in your seventh chakra. Like I just knew everything and for no reason, you know, I, I was a small, like three-year-old kid that just knew things. And however, my siblings were really annoyed with me yeah. <laughs> and I just never really had like, you know, an answer for it. And so like, I always knew things and I always felt things. I'm very, very clear sentient. So I always felt things like I was a really sensitive kid. Um, and then I did, like, I had a lot of, just like a lot of kids, you know, a lot of what quote unquote imaginary friends, but the mm -hmm. reality is, you know, those are, you know, your spirit team. And when you're a kid, you're just a lot more open to it. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I w was that similar for you? Definitely. Yeah. yeah. It, it, and it, cause it's, it's, it all runs together. Like it's just a, a natural part of life. You have these weird thoughts, you have these weird experiences and you don't want to tell nobody about them or if it's with shadow beings and stuff. Like I was having those experiences as a, as a kid, like almost a toddler, like four years old, having yeah. these experiences with beings walking in my room and getting on top of me and stuff and trying to suffocate yeah. me, just crazy stuff going We're on. Really like that's intense as a little kid yeah man yeah i i don't and I, i'll try to question it like like my mom and my grandmother and stuff they were involved in you know what i'm saying witchcraft like yeah. like doing spells and hexes on people like uh -huh. bad stuff really they're so from new orleans, yeah exactly and yeah and that's the thing because they're from new orleans like it was normal it, part of who you are I, I, I would hear them talk to friends on the phone and say hey girl you got some black candles yeah i gotta get this <laughs> this chick she's uh talking crap i'm like i'm a little kid and that's a normal phone call from my mom and it kind of faded away now she doesn't really do much but when i was a kid that was something they were doing and then i'm reminded of all the people that were yeah. in and out of the house like they would have parties and stuff too and they're just different people that bring different energies with them and they would get blackout drunk and pass out in front of me as a kid and that stuff went on in, in the house and then at nighttime weird stuff would happen i don't know yeah. what what was going on you know what i'm saying but i have to try to make those connections there don't you think um like i feel that those people actually brought those energies in and then those energies were kind of testing you because you're a kid you're open to it yep. you know adults aren't open to it as much so i feel like it was just more like the energy that was coming in your house yeah, it probably felt like it was flowing in and out as well. Like it wasn't always there. Like it, it yeah. came through things. Yeah. Yeah, it was just it was just a couple times where stuff happened that you know what I'm saying left a mark on me. Like for the I, I'll remember that for the rest of my life and I'm doing what I'm doing today because of something that happened when I was 4, you know? Right. 
Well, isn't that like the beauty of it all? Like I always say, uh, you know, it's like you come from the wounded healer and, mm-hmm. you know, and all of us that have come here to really like raise the vibration and like really do, you know, this work, you have to have the background of the wounded healer. Yeah. Otherwise you don't really know. Um, you know, you can't see light all the time. You have to go through the dark, you know, to really see the light and like how you want to raise things and how you want a better world. It's like you really, the unfortunate side is you do have to have you know that darker experience a lot of the times yeah and um it it just raises the questions of like which demons do we cast out and which demons do we try to rebuke versus the demons that we try to learn from and they're sent here to us for a reason and for a season to teach us something like i've made peace with my my demons in the past i'm thankful that, yeah. that that those things happen because I would not be the person that I am today. I wouldn't be doing what I'm doing. And it, it, all of that struggle and, and the dark stuff that we go through is to learn lessons. It's mm-hmm. maybe to have compassion for others who are stuck in that place. You know, definitely uh, it's something to learn from. But I'm, I, I've made peace with, with my past demons, even though when I was going through that stuff, like I wouldn't, there, there's no way, like I couldn't see the light at the end of the tunnel. But now I'm thankful for that stuff, you know. Yeah. It's hard to see it while you're in it. I yeah. don't think anyone ever sees it while you're in it, right? It's just <laughs> you well, gotta I think you get better. I think even yeah. though I think now a lot of times I'm I, I'm I have vision now. So a lot of times yeah. now when I'm going through a situation I'll know, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take this test and I'm gonna be stuck here until I learn the lesson. What is the lesson? Oh, that's right. the lesson. Let me apply it. Let me walk in forgiveness and love and healing to those who have wronged me. And it's, you know what I'm saying? It's on to the next chapter, the, the yeah. next testing. And so now you kind of, you kind of get familiar with it and you're right. able to kind of speak out in faith to people who are going to it. You know what I'm saying? Going through it. Uh, even yeah. with the whole, um, you know what I'm saying? Money and finance situation. Mm-hmm. And I've, I've been at a place where I lost my job in the past and I, I panicked like, oh, how am I going to pay bills? How am I going to do this? And then an a unexpected check will show up or something right. will happen or I'll, I'll work one day with, with a friend and make uh, more money than I was making in two weeks in one day. Just these miracles. And I was like, you know what? God got me. God got me. So there's no reason for me to freak out and panic. Like I'm a son. Like I don't have to worry where my next meal's coming from. So to be able to learn those principles and see our friends and family going through the same things that we've been through. We're like, hey, hold on. Don't freak out. The first thing you do is don't panic. God got you. It's going to be okay, you know? Yeah. No. And that just shows spiritual growth. Yeah. You know, that just shows like immense spiritual growth to be able to. I'm the same way now, too. It's like, you know, but you have to go through all those experiences to actually achieve spiritual growth, you know, and it's a constant work in progress, but you're kind of able to like, just view it and say like, okay, I'm in this lesson for this reason. And then you can work it energetically too. Like everything can be worked metaphysically and energetically. And like, when you do go in that fear mode, you know, you do have to kind of check yourself because fear just creates fear, you know, and the universe wants to create whatever you're asking for. So when you're they're saying, I don't have enough money for my mortgage. You know, the universe is going to be like, all right, let's, let's make that happen. Right. Yeah. Let's make sure you don't have enough money for your mortgage. Yeah. And so it's like, you really have to like check yourself and be like, no, you know what? Like God does have my back. Like the universe has my back. And like you do, you just have to like shift that perspective. And don't you find that like everything just is a matter of like working that energy and like shifting that perspective. Right. And kind of just yeah. like, almost like a little tweak like just move that energy a bit right yeah definitely there's a you know every you know i've studied the scriptures for years and come from a, the christian background but um you know what i'm saying the bible is full of a bunch of metaphysical stuff a bunch of oh gosh, yeah. some some beautiful esoteric stuff so when, when you talk about that my, my mind always goes back to the scripture says that the promises of god are yes and amen and it essentially mm-hmm. is like whatever you're putting out the universe is saying, yes, amen. Yeah. This is so be it. This is going to happen. So if you're focusing on, if you're focusing on the negativity, if you're focusing on the, the questions and the despair and rumors and, and you're just feeding into that stuff. But if you shift it, you begin to see, and it's all about faith. It's all that that's a lesson too, because until you see breakthrough happen there, you're going to still be stuck in the rut, but you know, you know what? My words are powerful and I'm going to, 
I'm going to speak my way out of this situation. I'm going to create this with my breath. I'm going to create this with the life that's given to me. And then once it starts happening, you say, oh, this, this is working. Every yeah. time I, I get in that place, even though I feel depressed, let me speak my way out of it. Let me bless this life that I want for myself. Let me bless my future. Let me bless my podcast. I do it for my podcast. I thank God in, in, in a spirit of gratitude. And I thank the, the, the prime creator that um, what that this podcast is helping people. It's changing people's lives and things. And guess what? My inbox in turn gets flooded with uh, in, uh, inbox messages where it's, the podcast is changing people's lives. I don't yeah. I don't see that as a coincidence. Like we're creating yeah. this. Yeah. We're co-creators with God is what the scripture yeah. says. Co-creators. That's it. That's it. Say yes and be grateful. That's yes and amen, right? Like mm-hmm. say your say your gratitude every single morning, and it's hard to have a bad day. It is. You know, right? Like even if you've had one of those nights where it's like you're you've stayed up because like you're so worried about things, it's like wake up and just be like, I'm so thankful for the roof over my head. I'm so thankful for this bed I'm in, right? And it really yep. does shift your perspective. Yeah. You are like, I mean, we're all living in this picture of the, on the earth plane, right? It's just like a picture that we're just being able to co-create along the way. Like we're so powerful and we don't even know it, you know, and that's all you had to do. You put it out to the universe that like, listen, like I want to change lives and like, this is what I want to do and provide an avenue for me to change lives, for me to inspire, for me to aspire, you know? And you also, you know, receive teachers along the way and you are a teacher along the way, you know, and you're totally creating that. It's so beautiful. Yeah. It's about it's about um, bringing it into the now moment is essentially what we're talking about. We see people like Eckhart Tolle, who's a millionaire off of teaching people how to bring uh, their life and their perspective into the now moment, because there's no such thing as tomorrow. Jesus even says, be anxious for nothing. Don't don't shift your consciousness outside of your, yourself to like, you know, what I'm saying six, six weeks from now. And I and I, I see that in my life. I used to play in, in a, a, a band, a metal band, and um, we would have gigs coming up and the gig may be a month out. And yeah. I was just over over um overly zealous consumed for this concert to come up. It was a big concert. And I'm like, man, I can't wait. So every day I'm thinking every day and I'm, I'm just focusing all my energy on that and then it comes and it goes and then i'm like oh well that was uh anticlimactic you know what i'm saying <laughs> and so but but it shows me it's like man i wasted a lot of time putting a lot of energy in something that w- was going to happen anyway and um but it, it shows you just being anxious for for something it takes you out of the now moment because your mind isn't on what we're doing now having a conversation no matter who you you're with be present focus on your breath focus on the things in your life that are are, are, are blessings that you're grateful for Should live life with the attitude of gratitude but to stay in that now moment, because that's where that's where the magic is. That's where stuff happens now. It's not tomorrow. It's not like, man, I hope to one day be a good rapper or, or I hope to hope to one day be a healer. Like that was my my whole thing with the whole um, psilocybin journey was yeah. shifting it outside myself. And I heard God. I heard the voice of the spirit say, you already are a healer. Yeah. And you're not going to be a healer. You already are. And begin to show me things in my life that, man. Like people are being healed, people are being set free through through the music, through through the prayers, and through the the podcast and everything that we're doing and stuff. And it it shifts the perspective perspective because yeah. there's no such thing as time. There is no yeah. tomorrow. It's about right now. And we can only manifest in present time. Exactly. You know that we can. This is our optimum manifestation is being in present time. And it's like, you just have to take that deep breath, like you said, and just be in the center of your head, you know, master controller of your seat. And that's where it happens. And we're the only animals on this planet that live in anxiety. And it's because we, we just go unconscious and we think about tomorrow. We think about the past. We're the only animals that do that. You know, that's why we're so anxious. You know, that's just, yeah, it's crazy. It's Mm -hmm. crazy. It's so much about worry and about doubt and about fear and how they you know what I'm saying they're they're powerful for one thing to be true so for faith belief understanding uh, creating uh, for all that to be true the opposite has to be true as well like so mm-hmm. doubt fear 
unbelief, worry, and anxiety, all of these things um, are true as well. And you have to pick. You have to uh, consciously pick which, what, what you're going to cater to and what you're going to walk in daily. And uh, regardless of the, cir- the circumstance, uh, the whole definition of, of faith in general is um, to see the things that are not as though they were, to be able to see uh, the things that you want to create and picture it in your mind's eye. Yeah, I love that. I really love that. Wow. Yeah, no, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. I love that. When it comes to, um, so you had these encounters as a kid and it was just something that came naturally. So when did it kind of move to the next level as far as getting serious or acting out that you know that I'm going to pursue this? There's something more there than just a kid with an overactive imagination and, and <laughs> right, as far right. as the psychic, psychic ability is, is concerned. Yeah. Well, you know, I, I moved into my teenage years and then my twenties and I actually forgot all about it. You know, I had to go through my wounded healer phase. Yeah. <laughs> I, I had to go through a lot of stuff and then it was, um, and for, I'm almost 43 now, but, um, in my, I got married, divorced. I went through the whole thing And I just completely lost myself. Like it was a complete out of body experience almost for like, you know, 15 years. And then once, so about 10 years now. um, So I must've been about 32, 33 and I got a divorce and I was just like, oh my gosh, like, who am I? Like, who am I? Like, I just had this huge awakening and I didn't even recognize myself anymore. Like that little girl that knew everything and like was, had such an imagination and believed in like unicorns and mermaids, like that girl didn't exist anymore. And it's like, who, you know, I believed in magic and fairies and I worked with the fairies and like that girl was just gone. And so I went through this huge transformation of like trying to find myself again. And I knew that like traditional therapy just wasn't it. Like I knew that I had to like really hit everything on a soul level. Like I had to go deep to like really find myself again and discover myself again. So, so it was about, yeah, about 10 years ago now, about 11 years ago where I just like completely dug deep into like all spirituality. It was just like, I was just like a student of the earth and like the heavens. And I was like, just give me every bit of knowledge, like just allow me to just be. And that's when it just like all started like flooding back in. So it's been about 10, 11 years. And then of course I went to like, yeah. Um, you know, I'm a formally trained clairvoyant. So I went through a lot of classes and, you know, like a year and a half worth of training just to like work on my third eye. And so it's like, I I really started, like, I, I kind of like just started to shed the layers, you know, it's like, it was therapy for me. And then it turned into so much more than just therapy. You know, it's like, I was able to like uncover everything and then I was able to discover. And then, so it's like, once I was there, I was able to then start like just building on like, no, you know, this is like who I want to become. And it's like, I was down and then it's now, now I'm like building that pyramid of like just lifting up. So, yeah, you know, but I do want to say like, um, you know, we talk about like being the healer and like, you know, your life path and thing like things like that. Like I have a lot of clients that come to me that exactly like you, they said, you know, like, I want to be a healer. I want to do that. And what people don't realize, like they don't give themselves enough credit that no matter what they're doing, like if they're walking on the street and they look someone in the eye and they say, hey, like, hey, man, like have a great day. Like you're a healer, like you're touching someone's face and a healing is really just about shifting space. And so people get a little like, um, you know, down like, oh, I need to do this professionally or I need to do things. And it's like. What people don't understand is like their light is within and they carry it with whatever they do. Like your tattoo artists, you know, they're all healers over there. They're yeah. all carrying their light, you know, and it doesn't necessarily yeah. have to be a professional space. Exactly. Yeah. To yeah. Be a professional yeah. healer like that. I lay hands on people and heal them or do Reiki or something yeah. like you can, you can bring healing in so many different ways. My, my wife works with a disabled children on um, horseback therapy. To oh people. My gosh, and uh wow. she 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 absolutely loves it and uh she's she's pretty much living her dream doing that yeah. you know and um it's awesome and and healing healing comes back to you know what i'm saying so many different places and it's just you being your authentic self whatever that is yeah and it doesn't need approval hopefully it's a, it's something good i believe it's something good i don't think your authentic self is someone who's a, a bad mean horrible person who 
pisses everybody off and stuff like that. I think it's something that is of love and light for everybody. I think that's across the board. But when you find out who that is and what you want to do, I think that those those uh, energies as far as healing and, and, and love and light will help to build that and to, and to actually walk in it full time. If you want to do it, if you want to be a full time healer. I mean, there's so many people watching who... I get the messages. They, you know what I'm saying? They want to be a healer. And it's the same. This is what we're telling you. Same thing. Spirit told us you already are. You what? already are a healer. Focus on that. Focus on what works. Don't, don't do what works for me. You got to find out what works for you. What are you good at? You might not be good at podcasting. You might not be good at rapping. Like I'm, th- this is my story. I'm, I'm embracing it. And whatever your story is, if you like to cook, do it. And, and be happy and, and that energy, whatever creates that sacred space for you. You know what I'm saying? And tap into that flow state. Learn yeah. how to do it, man. Yeah, because even say for the example of cooking, it's like you can carry, you could raise that vibration of that food. You could create something beautiful. And then everyone that's going to have this food is just going to be carrying this high vibration. You know, it's in everything that we do. And I think that um, like when you really do find what, your soul like really signed up to to experience it starts to flow easy and it may be something that you never saw yourself doing like i never thought that i would be a professional psychic and like teaching metaphysics i was always into it it always interests me but i never thought that like i would be doing it professionally and then it just steps the universe is like yeah no <laughs> yeah you are <laughs> yep. and and it's beautiful and honestly and that's like what we're talking about don't worry about the how focus on the what like i knew i wanted to um i knew i wanted to follow my heart's path and i didn't really even know what my heart's path was like i knew that i wanted to be at home and i'm sure that's important for you too after you have a life of always being on the road <laughs> like you know being home to me like yeah. the word is luxurious like mm-hmm. it is so luxurious just to be home And of course, that's not everyone else's journey, but it's like, I really wanted to follow my heart path and I really wanted to help people. And I really wanted to, to be a teacher and meaning like not even a professional teacher. Like I wanted like to share knowledge and like, really, there was a reason why I was, you know, I came to this world, uh, you know, being a positive girl, you know, I am a positive girl, not annoyingly, but it's like, Hey, you know, there's, there's a light to everything, like shine your light, like I think part of my work is allowing everyone to shine their light bright, you know, like never, never dull anyone's light. Like we all have this beautiful light that, that it's, it's our right to shine bright. You know, uh, I never want to throw dust on anyone's path, you know? So yeah. 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 I think, so, I, think yeah. I think the power kind of comes from uh, being a creator. Like if we're, if we're made in the image and likeness of a creator, then there's this um, inward, longing to create stuff and a and a a satisfaction and a gratitude that comes when we birth something that didn't exist when i when i get done with a song and it's something it's a good one i feel really good about it like and i'm able to share it with the world and other people are having like ex- spiritual encounters and mystical experiences by listening to my music but then yeah. it it goes it didn't exist like that I created it. I birthed it into this reality. I went to the ether, the dream yeah. state, and brought it into this reality, something that didn't exist. And yeah. it's and it's for like we're saying, the tattoo artist who who comes up with a a, a painting or, or puts art on somebody's body, someone who bakes something, someone who creates. And I think maybe that's what what we're we're longing to do. We're longing to imitate the creator, and we want to create something. And um, hopefully it's good stuff. You know, people create yeah. create bad stuff all the time, and 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 I don't know if they're if they're happy with creating it, but I know they're happy with the paychecks and stuff that comes from creating bad stuff. But to that that experience, and I think I'm I think I'm resonating with some people when I say that of just wanting to create, wanting to birth something that didn't exist until you breathed into it, because it feels so good right? It feels good to be the creator. And I think what you said was absolutely beautiful about like, um, it's that whole image of, you know, that God's within us and that whole image of I am God, you know, we are mimicking the creator. We are God. Like I am God. Like that's, 
that was a huge step for me to like <laughs> step out. Like, it, you know, I live on the beach here and it's like to step out on the beach and like put my arms out and be like, I am God. Like mm. it is a beautiful thing to say and you do feel it. And it is a beautiful creation space to, to live in. And, oh my God, it feels so good to create. It's like you plant that little seed and you water it and you nurture it. And, you know, it takes time. Yeah. Like everyone thinks like, okay, well, I put it out to the universe and yeah. like they haven't answered back. <laughs> Well, it's like that seed that you're planting, like you've got to water it every day. You, the sun has to come on it. You know, you have to nurture it. It may be a year before it grows. And then it may be three years before it bears fruit. Like it's, it's a beautiful thing and creation happens on its own time. And Oh my God, I love creating too. And that's like what inspires me. Like my friends, they say, Oh my God, like you never stop. And it's like, it doesn't feel like work. Like, I think that's when you know you're on your right path. There you go. Yeah doesn't feel like work it's like oh man i don't mind like i don't mind these like 16 hour days i minded those 16 hour days when i was flying (laughs) but i don't mind it now because it's like i'm creating what i want to create and hopefully inspiring people along the way Mm -hmm. you know and then that's when it just doesn't feel like work is when that's my impression yeah definitely Yeah. yeah when you when you're able to do it and uh and it doesn't feel like work um there's the whole the whole side of it that um we're talking about the spiritual aspect of creating. So, I mean, obviously someone can, can, you know, just easily paint a picture and there's no connection there. They're, they're, they're birthing something, but there's like a yeah. spiritual aspect of it that, that, that we see that we connect with, um, with creating. And, but then there's the practical side as well. And just like we're talking about with healing, there's the spirit, the, the really deep hands-on Reiki, uh, moving energy, um, helping people out with, uh, curses spoken over them negative um mindsets and stuff like that really deep spirituality but it all comes back to something very practical as well like you said just saying hello to somebody telling somebody um you know hope you know, saying wishing them well on their day whatever it is giving somebody a hug shaking somebody's hand looking them in the right. eye Wh- whatever whatever the case is it it gets deep but it always comes back to being practical and i'll always mention like i don't really talk about conspiracy theories too much anymore because it's a theory like it's not tangible it's not practical we can't bring it into our lives and see change and see manifestation we're just talking about uh theories and i I like to deal with truth and i think that what we're talking about has the ability to uh to change people's lives and we're seeing that so it's as spiritual as you want to make it because everything is and I, i i know we i don't think we over spiritualize it but if it if it doesn't if you can't take your your spirituality and bring it into practicality for somebody's life, man, then I, I really don't want nothing to do with it. But I think that's what yeah. it's about, right? Bringing it into the um, um, now moment and being able to uh, bring it into our just like day to day, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah. And you know, in spirituality, like, cause I read energy and like when I read that someone's running like a spirituality, uh, spirituality energy, you know, um, it's a hard thing to define because spirituality is so individualized and spirituality is so within and like your spirituality is not my spirituality. And it's like, it's all about like not living up to anyone else's expectations. It's about go within and find out what is your spirituality. And that doesn't even, you don't ever have to say the word God in your spirituality. You know, you can, you can, your world is your world and like whatever you want to create and that's your spirituality like go for it man right like if that's what makes you feel good go for it and that's your truth and i think that's the beauty of spirituality and the beauty of like what we're moving towards and stuff and kind of um you know maybe stepping away from like organized uh temples and religions and congregations, even though that works for some people and that's wonderful for them, you know, but the reality is, is you are your own temple. So however you want to experience your spirituality, like I'm all for it. You know, for me, it's like, I'm out on the water. Like, um, I have a little bulldog and we, we hit the waves together. And like, that's the moment of like, when I'm closest with nature and like, that's where my meditation space. And that's actually where I get my major downloads. Mm -hmm. And so that's my spirituality yeah and that's what works for you and it's working so you can share it but you can share that with others with confidence because Mm -hmm. it's actually working you know yeah because i'm integrated Mm -hmm. yeah (laughs) yeah and yeah so i just encourage people like go out man like just go out and find it like you'll it'll find you (laughs) yeah yeah and, and, and we got 
people who look up to us and um uh, well, I say us we have a lot of different people in our circles and stuff and different healers and and uh, uh missionaries and stuff who who are all who, who are all powerful and then we have friends who who listen and they I don't know if they get confused but we all do it differently mm-hmm. and they're like I guess they're stuck they're like I don't know if I should listen to you or do it like you or do it like you or do it like you and I said look I don't want you to do it like me I think you're supposed to learn from all of us whoever's in your life you you're learning from whether it's something you want to apply or 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 push it away right the, mm-hmm. um so w- whatever is works for you if i bring something to the table that works apply it to your life see if it's tangible try it on. Um, I- anybody i don't i don't care who it is but if you try it out and it it's falling on its face it doesn't work for you keep it moving yeah keep it moving no you don't have to yeah. be another spitting image of another person and adopt I think coming out of religion teaches us that, that though, that we have to like agree to the tenets and do it this yes. way and this way and this way. And if I don't do it, then I won't be accepted or I'm doing it wrong. Right. So much judgment, right? So much judgment. Mm-hmm. And I think that's hard as human beings. Like we have to deprogram ourselves against that judgment because we've all been raised our generation i mean we've all been raised with some sort of foundation you know even if it wasn't a congregation it was some sort of foundation that you were programmed to believe in right whether it was anti whether it was this or that you know it's some foundation you were programmed and that's the whole thing we were just programmed and the world shouldn't be about judgment like you shouldn't feel resistance when you're starting to dive into spirituality, you shouldn't feel any resistance. Try it on, try it on, see what it feels like for you. And, you know, and do a body check on yourself. Like, am I getting like a sick pit in my stomach? Oh, that's my solar plexus. Okay. Maybe that dress isn't right for me. You know, let me try something else, you know, and it'll find you, it'll find you. But yeah, judgment is one of those things where I'm like, Oh, it bugs me so much. Like I just, wish, <laughs> you know, and we just, it's, we're so programmed to judge other people. Ugh. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, you, you have to go through it to learn not to do it a lot of times. You know what I'm saying? Like I try, yeah. I try my hardest not to bring about division or crush somebody's dreams. Even if I don't agree with like yeah. everything a person's doing, I try to do it gracefully. I don't try to tear a person down because I've been there. Like I've been the person who has been the one to, Hey, stay away from that guy. He's this. When I was coming out of Christianity, I was an evangelist and stuff. And then when I started talking about aliens or psychic abilities or having this podcast interviewing people who, who believed in this kind of stuff, um, Uh it was a weird trans transition for me. Um, just because I thought it would open up dialogue from a biblical perspective with these people in the church realm, but it didn't, it kind of like backfired on me. Like there was having, there was conversation being had, but I wasn't a part of it. It was just about me, you know? So they weren't for you. They were against you. Yeah. And like being real empathic, like you can feel that you can feel when groups of people are gossiping about you. And then there was times like I tried to go back and visit the particular church yeah. And people couldn't look me in the eyes, and I was like, "Hey, it's just the same me. I still believe this stuff. I've been believing. I just, I'm just vocal about it now. Like nothing's changed, yeah. you know. But they like look I at me like, oh my God, you're here.' I'm like, hey, what's what y'all been doing?' You know. <laughs> and don't you, know? you think that it's just their own fear? It is. It definitely yeah. is. Definitely yeah. is. Well, it's yeah. the it's the fear that they're wrong. Uh huh. If truth seeker uh-huh. is right, then I'm wrong. And right. so they've given their life to follow a doctrine. They've given their they've they've paid money. They pay yeah. a lot of money and but they've they've pledged their their not only their life but their afterlife. Yeah. So if they they've been lied to about something they've pledged their life and given their eternal salvation over into and you're a threat to that. You know what I'm saying? That's that's very fearful. I mean, yeah. we've all had to kind of reach reach those levels to where we, we're in the unlearning process and we have to break down everything that we've learned. I, I mean, I did that coming into my awakening, even with the Bible and everything I've, I've taught. Cause you have your, your essential core truths and you're like, I'm just praying, get along with God. Like, God, you teach me. I don't want to remember nothing. These people taught me if it's not of you, if it's, if it's, if it's not true and you have to break down and kind of give a reason just for your own self of why you believe what you believe and go through it. Okay, do I is this true? Let me research it. Let me look it up. Okay. 
and just kind of build yourself again from from the ground up and essentially yeah. <laughs> essentially you got to be born again you know what i'm saying you got to do it all over yeah. again it's you know a valid, you know that's a valid phrase born again <laughs> like, like all of us like coming into this have been born again yep. in some form or another maybe not the traditional sense yeah of the phrase, exactly but some form or another you know and i just appreciate it when someone is a free thinker you know when someone actually thinks for themselves and i think that's the downside of, um, and don't get me wrong, like I think um, a lot of people respond really, really well in organized religion exactly, and I know yeah. that it works for them. But um, I think a lot of people, they're not free thinking what their views are as far as religion goes. You know, so I, I completely admire you that you like stepped out and you were just like, listen, like, these are the thoughts that are going on in my head. Like these are my downloads that I'm receiving and I'm just going to live my authentic truth. And that takes a lot of balls. I mean, that takes like a lot of cojones to get out there and like know that you're going to have opposition and, and to just say it. So yeah. I went, man. I went through a lot to, you know what I'm saying? To be it's where I am. And I'm vocal about it because I'm reading the chat room right now. There's a bunch of people watching on YouTube live um, because they're in, the position that I was in, you know, six years ago, like they're going through it now. They're having the awakening. They're having UFO encounters, alien encounters. They have other, um, um, other sacred texts that appeal to them, other religious teachers that don't claim. And, and so they're having this awakening that's outside of the box. But if they're vocal about it, you're going to get the boot to the back of the, the back of the head. They're going to like, it's, it's nasty the way they do it. Even if it's what's what it's kind of been called ghosting now where they don't even, yeah. they just don't even talk to you. You're just, you don't exist. It's not like they, it's not like they make a formal statement, but that that's hard on people, man. Like this is your family, you know? Yeah. Well, it's basically taking like the rug from underneath you, like yeah. ripping away foundation and i don't know like the whole dichotomy of it of like you know god is supposed to be there to support you and love you for no matter what and like and so it's very difficult for me to hear <laughs> that like i'm happy my lesson wasn't to go through what you went through with that you know i mean because that's really hard like this is who you identified with and then it's like all of a sudden you speak up something different <laughs> And then like your foundations ripped over and it's like, Hey, what happened to like, God has my back yeah. or you know, that we are supposed to love our brother. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I mean, is that a scripture? Love thy brother. Heck yeah. Um, <laughs> it, it was hard going through it, but I have to not play the victim. And once I, once I yeah. can, can look at it from their perspective, okay, you have a doctrine, you have a belief system, you have a system that's helping people. It's healing people. And then you got this other guy coming bringing something different, challenging this person, I, I become a threat. So yeah. they have to kind of find some way to deal with that person or to shun them. And their way is just to tell everybody to stay away from them. Like there was never no conversation with me. I've never had a conversation with the pastor about anything I believe or nothing like that. Or, or, or really not, you know what I'm saying? Not even people of the, of the congregations and stuff. Like it was just like, I'm open for the world. Like all my belief system is documented on the internet. You know what I'm saying? Right, so right. whether it's posting on Facebook, which is a big one, you know what I'm saying? Um, but I think, I think in, 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 in their case, they're justified because they had to protect something. And um, so anybody who's going through that, just look, man, you guys are a threat to their system. You're not going to, yeah. and people want to try to stay there. Like, Oh, I'm going to stay there, man. I'm getting fed here spiritually. I really, Cope when I say, bro, you can't be yourself. Like if, if these people believe, if these find these people find out, I got a buddy of mine who's working on an album. It's out now. Watchmen. He would go uh -huh. to church and he, he loved it. And they would, they would, they got to a point where they were talking down about me not wanting to go to church. And I was like, bro, I can't, I'm a threat to these people, bro. Um, mm -hmm. and, and you are too. If, if these people find out that you're working on a, an album about, ET contact and aliens and UFOs and the Kundalini spirit and meditation. Oh, okay. If they find out that you're doing that, they're going to cut your head off. It's over for you, bro. Only fear and love exist. You know, that's it. it, it that's it. Yeah, it's a, you got to get out of there, man. You, gotta, yeah. you can't, you can't, you, it's Run. like, it's like people trying to, trying to, uh, 
join politics to change it from the inside out and stuff. Like I can be a change. Like man, you're gonna That's eventually it. see that they're that <laughs> you know they're gonna change you. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, change starts within. And I know it sounds like super cheesy and cliche, but listen, like if you want to change the world, like just you can do like grassroots go on and just start changing yourself and look like take you for example it's like i'm just gonna start like bringing content out and like hopefully like you know stimulating conversation yep. and like it's a grassroots movement and like look how many lives you're impacting you know like i mean i think now is the grassroots movements you know yeah. like it's corporations that we kind of have to shy away from and it's the grassroots movement so yeah so now uh, I'm curious about like uh, all your uh, your alien contact and stuff as far as like, well, you're the host. Go for it. You do what you want. Uh, sorry. <laughs> uh, no, go ahead. <laughs> what do you want to know? Well, I'm just uh, so because I work with a few uh, like I have an ascension guide that's uh -huh. actually like an eighth dimension. And so I'm just curious, like when you get your, you know, like ET contacts or like, you know, ET downloads, that sort of a thing. Uh, do you find that it's from like the a higher vibration, a higher dimension, and like you're getting like very uh, like yeah. ascension, like activations yeah. and that sort of a thing? And it's not like the fear based of like time ago where it was like yeah. ah, oh heck yeah. yeah, heck yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I'm I'm really against that stuff as far as like the you know what I'm saying the whole fear, um, as far as like alien abductions or any anything like that. Like I think a lot of that stuff was just w was was done by the government to put fear and hysteria in that community so that when you see a craft or you see a light in the sky you won't try to contact it you won't try to signal it like there's cases of people signaling it and i talk about it in my in in some of my songs that um talking about going out with the lasers and shooting the lasers up at these lights yeah. that are that are in out, outer space pretty much you know and uh but but you know what i'm saying for me from a christian perspective that's where i approached it it was all studying angels Mm -hmm. First, it was they were all demons because that's where um, the, the Christian perspective on UFOs is that they're all demonic. Anything out there in space is is a, an alien demon. And uh, so I, I studied it from that perspective for a long time. But I seen it was just super duper biased and it would ignore facts and stuff, you know, and I was like, man, these people have an agenda like this all isn't demonic. Like what I'm researching is showing that the that these are angelic. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've been just began to kind of open up my, my research and, and to different people. Um, James Gilliland, which I just had on the podcast. Um, he was he was a big one for me. Dr. Stephen Greer. There was a guy who's 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 passed passed now. But uh, he had a uh, Patrick Cook. He had a website called Bible UFO dot com. And it was just like his wife ended up deleting it once he passed, which kind of sucks. But um, oh. it was slam full of biblical scriptures that would describe what they believe to be UFOs and these encounters with these angelic beings that almost seemed um, like you're dealing with technology and, and stuff and, and so many obscure biblical passages and I would research that stuff and then there was historical documents b dating back from like the 1800s of people uh, seeing UFOs and stuff and so I just began to do the research for what it was and then go out under the night sky and try to make contact. And I'm pray talking to God, I'm praying, you know, if these are what I'm researching in the Bible as the Elohim uh, or the, the um, cherubim or the seraphim, which are mentioned of in the Bible of different types of, of angelic host. Um, the word seraphim means the fiery ones, the ones right. who are made out of fire. And then I'm going out there stargazing, praying, talking to God, connecting. And I yeah. see a fiery, chariot fly by yeah. and stop on a dime and i'm like that chills yeah yeah and, it, and that was that was life-changing and i didn't know who to talk to about i couldn't talk to my pastor about this stuff you know what i'm saying so i started the podcast you know and i reached out to james gillen and his staff and people i would call in the podcast like podcasts uh -huh. were big for me i would find people who were were all types of faith i'd call hindu podcasts i've called called the, the egyptology where people are talking about just like ascending talking about the same thing that we're talking about in Christianity, but it's just worded differently. And I was able that's to see that. Thing. Yeah. I was able to see that. Thing. Yeah. And it's so, just two different 
picture, you know, when you actually do it, say you lay all these religions out on the line on a completely mm -hmm. horizontal path, like there's, they all build off of each other. They yeah. all have similarities. It's just too big of a picture to, to think that there's just one dominant one. Yeah, And each one yeah. thinks that they're the only way, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, and they're saying the same thing. And I noticed that like, I could, I could, I could teach the teachings of Jesus, but not or even Paul the Apostle, some of his teachings, but I would reword them. I wouldn't quote them as chapter and verse and stuff. I would just give you the spirit of it and what it meant, and people would resonate with it. Like I would go on so many talk shows and stuff, and people would resonate with it, but the church crowd would get mad because I misquoted it or I said it differently. And they're like, they're like, and they would get mad. It's, like, it's the same essence. I'm saying the same thing, but I, I didn't preface it the way that you wanted. It just showed me the dogma. Like you don't really care what's being said. You 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 care more about how it's being said. Like he's yeah. talking about love and acceptance and uh, showing grace to those who don't deserve grace. Showing yeah. love and, and 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 mercy to those who feel like they don't deserve it. Like that's the the message of Jesus. Like like now that we're doing that in a way that's non judgmental, why are you getting mad? And I just seen people lash out over the years. Yeah. Like, you know, what? I gotta I gotta step back, man. And um. Just just do what works. Like those, this stuff works for me, and uh, and it, and Jesus taught it, Paul taught it, and so did all the other religions. They they all taught it, and uh, and it's beautiful, and that, that's that's what it's about for me. So whether it was dealing with UFOs or going out there, and I and I just seen and there was just, just a span of probably a year, a year and a half, where I just had so much activity of seeing yeah. craft, and then the telepathic communication comes. Uh -huh. um, and then it a lot. the downloads and then it yeah. was like, okay, I'm seeing all this at night and I'm, I, I want to know for myself, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm going out, I'm not going out there for, to start a podcast. I'm not going out there for nobody else. I'm going, I'm spending hours under the stars for myself, um, to right. know what, how the universe works, what's happening. And mm -hmm. I seen it. I, 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 I seen so much and, um, it's, it's, it, it, and then I wanted to see it during the day because it's like, okay, if you're having these sightings at night, it could easily be a plane. It can easily be a satellite. Let me see something during the day. Look and at then, <laughs> and then, Yeah. And then I started seeing it. I wanted to make sure I'm not, because like you have this expectation that's crazy. And then when, when you're out there stargazing and the plane's coming, you're like, maybe it's a UFO. And you're like, oh, it's a plane. Like everybody does that. So you got to kind of yeah. catch yourself, you know, uh, j just to make sure. But I seen stuff that would blow your mind. I'd yeah. see like, fleets of ufos come out of nowhere a fleet of them and they wow. would do shapes and formations and then they would just disappear and, and leave during the day like i've seen oh. this stuff and then there's downloads and it's insane like something's going on yeah well you opened yourself up you opened up the communication and all yeah. you have to do is look up it's been is going it? on over our heads the entire time but we're so consumed and it's symbolic about spiritually being consumed with the things of this earth and our own pleasures and our own uh egos and things like that all we had to do was just stop take a few minutes and focus and just look up anybody can have these encounters i'm not special like i didn't like everybody can do this you know and that's what that's what i try to if that's what you want do it you have to do the work but it's it's available yeah. for you if you want to know that what we're saying is true try it it's yeah. tested like it, it something's going on but then the, it's the whole scenario about wh how do you interpret that well you're contacting demons or you're contacting angels and but i've got the scriptures and the teachings and lines about how alien i mean ufos or angels have been contacted and that's what they they are for me they're all just you know what i'm saying different types of angels that are watching over us and communicating yeah. and stuff so yeah and really it's about focusing your awareness right and mm -hmm. that's almost how all of this spirituality works like that's how clairvoyance works too you just focus your awareness you know as humans we tend to be focusing our awareness on tomorrow or you know the next concert or you know, a month from now or looking down or focusing on like i gotta get to work on time we focus on other things but you just focus your awareness on what you wanted to focus your awareness on and mm -hmm. there it is yeah i want to i want to address a uh a, a, a um a comment in the chat room yeah. this is this is from a, this is from a good friend of mine kenny ride out and I, I i've done some teachings on this in the in the past but they were since removed on my old channel years ago but uh kenny ride out which is a good friend of mine he says even satan can appear as an angel of light 
Got to be careful of the of great deception to fool even the elect, um, if it yep. were possible to fool even the elect. Uh, I want to address that scripture because that's that's one that comes up um, in the uh, angel and um, uh-huh. alien debate about a- angels and aliens and demons. And I just want to address that, like if we're looking at the context of scripture, that sounds good. Uh, the scripture says that even Satan and his ministers are transformed as angels of light. And so when we're into the supernatural, we're into aliens and demons, we think that that's talking about um, a light being or an entity that comes as an angel of light and, and appears to you or an alien in outer space that's really a demon that uh, appears as an angel of light, it looks beautiful, it looks like a woman with a flowing dress or something that is pleasing to the eyes. And so that's where that's where the Christian church... Uh, sees that but if we i want to point that out because in the context of that if you read it it says that even satan can appear as an angel of light and even his his uh his servants as ministers of righteousness that's talking about pastors like if we read that in the context that's talking about preachers that are deceiving people that are that have malicious intent but they appear as angels of light the word angel means messenger and when it's being used there in the context, he's talking about false prophets. He's talking about people who come come to you uh, with the Bible, but inwardly they're ravenous wolves. That's exactly what he's talking about. I can see where it, w- it would be appealing to think that it was talking about entities there, and that would be cool. And maybe the, the principle is still true. Maybe a demon can come to you, but that scripture is not talking about entities that scripture is talking about ministers of righteousness. It's talking about preachers. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. wanted to clear that up a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. It, he, but he says, okay, but, but it could be angels as well. It could be angels as well. It could be, but right there, it's talking about preachers. The whole, the whole warning that demons come as angels of light. That's a, it's talking about pastors and, and false prophets who are coming, deceiving the people there. Mm-hmm. But there's a but there's a lot more to it. I mean, there there there's other scriptures that talk about um, what is it um that you know people getting into the worshiping of angels, right? So there's that too. You begin to worship an angel or worship a messenger, a minister. There's people who worship ministers, gurus. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know how you feel about it, but I just I feel that um, I don't I don't believe in worshiping you know a guru or putting anyone up on a pedestal thinking that they're higher than anyone else right i do believe in like we're all here for this human experience you know we all have this beautiful light body inside of us and we're all here for this beautiful experience and once you start idolizing you know something else and putting your energy into idolizing something else um i don't know you know i feel like it kind of stunts your spiritual growth a little bit but that's just my opinion yeah i mean (laughs) But we always have this like veneration for people who have helped us, though, especially early on. You know what? And there's a thing. And I know I'm getting all religious here, but there's a thing in like in in like the church circles. They call it being church hurt is when like the pastor does something or the congregation does something to you and you get offended and leave the church. Usually I've seen that happen when um, someone's a baby Christian or they just get into religion. And this this could be. You know what I'm saying? Universal for Islam, Hinduism, uh, yeah. you know what I'm saying? New age circles, it doesn't matter. But when you have yeah. your faith in that person and that person does something wrong, like uh, we, we've seen them like, well, there's a pastor who gets caught stealing money. Let's just say that or going outside of his marriage or whatever the case is. And then the the person who was following them, they quit believing in God. They their Their whole faith is shattered because of this man. This, yeah, this, yeah, they yeah. put this person on this platform and this person fell. And now, now your, your faith in God is shaken off of right. a, the actions yeah. of another man. And that shows yeah. you that their faith was in that person. And there's so many people and they don't even know it though. Like if you come into it, it's, Hey, pastor, this, Hey, pastor, that, Hey, that. And you're just kind of in that club. Oh yeah. I believe this because pastor or whatever. And people find themselves there so often, you know? Oh, yeah. Well, that goes back to the be be a free thinker, you know, 
be a free thinker. You know, I, I mean, of course, like we're all, we're always going to like have people that inspire us. Right. And we're always going to look up to people and like, like I find so much inspiration in you. Am I going to idolize you? Hey, I mean, as much as maybe, but, <laughs> but probably not, you know, yeah. like I'm not going to put all of my faith into, into someone's word a yeah. hundred you know, like, I mean, if you can, like, take everything with a little bit of a, you know, grain of salt, yeah. it's, you know, I think that's when you kind of get yourself into, you kind of dig yourself a little bit of hole is when you idolize, you know, and really put all your expectation and all your faith into one being. And the reality is, is that we're all human and we're all going to F up, right? Like, yeah. we're all going to, like, just fuck up at some point, right? <laughs> And we might as well be in our master controller seat and like we can handle a lot better if we ourselves fuck up because we tend to take it a lot more personal, you know, if we, someone we're idolizing does that, right? And it knocks us off. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then, and then when you, you know, and then like a lot of times when you finally meet that person that you're, you're, um, you're that, that you're looking up to idolizing a lot of times people, people are let down because <laughs> they have yeah. greater expectations. They're like, yeah, because they know, put them up here. Yeah. yeah like, I, I'm a regular person, bro. Like I'm a regular dude just like you. And, and I'm here to show you like, I'm here like Jesus. What did Jesus do? He's here to show you that you can do it too. Yeah. Greater things. Anything that I've done, you see me do greater things. You shall do But I'm done and greater. And that's, that's it. Don't follow me. Don't worship me. Don't put me on a pedestal. Um, right. cause, cause I'm going to let you down. It, yeah, I don't know when. It, yeah, we're just humans. It's what we do. <laughs> it's, it's just it's because people have these fake, like, um, that's just the whole thing with idolatry. They have these preconceived notions of you and these expectations that you didn't sign up for. Like, right. hold on. I know. I, I, and, and, and so I, I've talked about this extensively in the past, but um, people put you on a pedestal and they're let down. And, um, yeah. you know, it's that. The, the whole thing is, is weird, though, because what we what I come from, the church realm, and I know it's done in, in all these other circles as well. But in the church realm, um, you got to have all the answers. You have to have everything figured out and you have to demonize the other ministers or the other denominations like they have to be bad. You can't say, oh, yeah, they're good, man. Good people, bro. They love God. You can't say that. You have to say, well, you got to be careful. And that's their thing. You got to be wow. careful. And so um, I've seen that even in the fringe, because I'm like on the outer skirts of the fringe Christian movements and stuff. And, and there's a lot of other people who have big followings. And I've tried to make it my point not to demonize them or talk bad about them because I can see the bigger picture and I know what you, you're doing and you're doing that to build a following. But you have to like if I want you to support me, but I know you guys listen to so and so I have to be like. Yeah, he's cool, but yeah, he he's into some stuff. I don't believe in that. He's off on this. He's, you know, he's kind of lost his way. And you you do that to make yourself look better in hopes that those people will turn away from that person and follow you. Yeah, it's just ego and fear. That's it. You got you got to you got to escape that stuff. When when you see people doing that, I'm telling you guys, you think you think that they're looking out for you. They they they're, they're trying they're trying to reel you in and get you and 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 get you to be their follower. They you know, they want they want to be your your guru. They want you to be the devotee to them and support yeah. them financially and all that stuff. It's dirty, man. And I can't flow freely in that and it's demonic. And I try I try not I try to I try to stay neutral in that whole thing, man. You know? I try to look for the good in people because yeah. out of everybody out there, I think they all have some good. But if oh I think God. somebody if I think somebody's making it up, I'll let you know. If I think they're fake, <laughs> I'll let you know. Hey, you but know? you're just being real. Yeah. All that other stuff's just a form of manipulation and it really is just throwing dust on someone's light, you know. And the truth is is like like we're going back to, you know, creation. It's that we can live in abundance if we want to, and everyone can free willingly create what they want to create. And even your competitor, people are going to follow <laughs> him for his reasons. Right. And then people are going to follow you for your reasons. If it's, like, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. That's just you know? how it is. Like it'll just happen without you, you know, throwing dust on someone's, you know, game over there, you know, mm -hmm. that's what I, 
Yeah, I'm, I'm sitting here reading some of the co- comments in the chat room. I know you can't see them, but uh, <laughs> it's nothing, nothing about you. It's just all about religion and politics. And uh, and then somebody says uh, the only, he says, uh, this is Hunter Fuse. He calls in all the time. He says, uh, the only one that's bad is the Catholics due to their idolatry. That's what he said. Uh-huh. Uh, their, their idolatry of Mary. And uh, oh, that's okay. that's that's the whole thing. I mean, like, there's good and bad with all of them. And if we're if we're gonna sit here and 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 pick it out and exp- and point it out, I'll tell you this: when it comes to that, because I was big into that in the church, you know, the, the evangelicals, the Protestants, they talk bad about the Catholics, right? That's just part yeah. of it. They stay away from them. They worship Mary. They don't worship Jesus. They're into this, they're into that. And there's a lot of truth to it. They're, they have a lot of truth to that, right? And I studied it. I studied Babylonian worship and the way the father, the, the father, the son, and the mother is worshipped and venerated. And there's always the Trinity in every religion. And they're yeah. worshipped on the same holy days on, on the, December 25th, Easter. Like all of this stuff is high pagan days. That's where I come from. I come from studying that stuff and exposing it as being satanic or as being pagan or whatnot. But... Mm-hmm. And I would find contention, like I would make it my goal to be the truth seeker and to give you guys the truth on these false religions. Um, But when I had my awakening, got the knowledge, yeah, yeah. When I had my awakening, the big thing was how I could. I remember distinctly being around a Catholic, and not trying to find contention with them, and seeing him as my brother. And seeing somebody who's on his own journey of awakening, his own journey of truth and seeing what we can agree on and not be like, hey, man, you're in a false religion. You guys worship Mary. The Bible says that, you know, what I'm saying call no man father, but you call your priest the father, you know, and all of this stuff. And, you know, Jesus told us how to pray uh, in, in, in the uh, Lord's prayer, our father who art in heaven. Why do you guys pray to Mary? You know, and have all of these things. But I found that when I could be around this guy and not bring that stuff up and i went away like you know what i'm making something's happening man i'm making pro- and it's a good thing of not finding contention with everybody who don't believe in what you believe in like that's the thing you know hey you're you're wrong because i believe this okay just because i'm wrong don't mean you're right no no no, but the, isn't that like the beauty of being human and the beauty of the world is that we all can free think for ourselves and we all can believe in something. I mean, the diversity is what makes it beautiful, I think. I mean, I wouldn't want to be a whole list of androids all believing <laughs> in the same thing, right? Like, where Lemmings. would your soul be? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's, 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 it's sad, but like you said, um, religion is... Uh, is is it's good for those who need it like who are coming out of that i mean i look at it like this and this is maybe getting too deep about it but the the (laughs) word you know i'm saying (laughs) the word religion means to bind or to hold back Mm -hmm. and the majority of people i'm gonna say majority and you guys you don't have to be like you could see this um who are dealing with religion or it's good for them it's because they need to be told what to do or how to think when it comes to um, a lot of people coming off of drugs, a lot of people coming out of abusive relationships. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people for someone to be addicted to drugs. And I I don't say this to be mean, but it's a lot of weak minded people to, to let a substance, to let another person rule your life. So you get into a church circle to kind of come out of that, and you need to be told how to think. You need to be told when to wake up, what to do, touch this, don't do this, because you can't you can't figure it out. It's wow. good. It's good for many people. The religion means to bind or to hold back, and some people need it. And it played wow. it plays a role. It played a role in my life, a huge role. Um, I come off of drugs. I come I come out of that. There's so many AA meetings and stuff of of like. Um, um, Celebrate recovery is what they call it in the church, but it's the same thing about coming off of drugs and being told how to live. Man, people don't know. Like, so church is helping a lot of people like those. It's structure, but it can only take you so far. You can you can only go so far. And um, and, and once you come out of that and you come into your own, um, there comes a point where you you may have to kick it to the curb. And, and but for some people, you may never reach that point. 
And that's yeah. not a bad thing, though. I'm not talking yeah. down on it. That's not a bad thing. If, if it's for you, it's for you. If that brings you joy, you love that community of people, don't, don't listen to anybody, man. If that's what makes you happy, you stick with it. But if there's contention there, and many of you guys who are listening, you know, an hour and 20 minutes into this podcast, you're listening to this for a reason because you guys are going through that. You're having the contentions and stuff, man. Um, yeah, if there's any sort of resistance in your life where there's contention, there's like you feel conflicted in your life, that's really there for you to like really take a look at it and be like, what's not serving me in this? Because if you were supposed to be there, it would be a lot easier. It would just feel different in your system. So it's there to like, have you take a look at it and to like reevaluate it and be like, what's my position in this? And like, what's, what's in resistance? Like, how do I change it? Otherwise it would feel easy. Yeah. But it's, it's, um, it's good for a lot of people though. So to just yeah. to throw the baby out with the bathwater, but be careful in there. There's a lot of stuff that goes on. That's not good. And you figure that out. So it doesn't take a rocket scientist. If it does, then this may be the wrong podcast for you. But um, <laughs> yeah, man, just uh, do do whatever works. I mean, some people are called into that. And, and yeah. I'm, in a, I'm in a weird position, though, because like yeah. everybody and I've kind of come accustomed to it. I'm not trying to get you to leave your church, but I'm telling you, like I get messages from church leaders. I get messages from worship leaders who um, want to do mushrooms. They feel like it's calling them. Psilocybin's calling them. And they're a church worship leader. And I'm not like, I don't tell, do it, bro. Do it, bro. I don't, that's not me. But you guys know what I say. If it calls you, it calls you. And you have no choice but to do it. I get messages from uh, Christian radio DJs who have some of the biggest stations in the country. And they they listen to this podcast because Uh I'm talking about the stuff that they can't talk about. And... I don't, I don't call myself promoting it, but if it calls you, it calls you, but I'm letting you know the consequences. If you do it and then you're in this place where you can't talk about it freely, that's not good. You can't be who you truly are. You're passionate about music. You're passionate about, um, the ways of the past, the the path of the ancients. Psychedelics is a part of that, but you can't talk about it. That's, I'm telling you, we're talking about being free and being your authentic self. You yeah. can't thrive in those circles, man. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. It's going to come eventually. Like eventually you're going to want to, if you have a life changing encounter, like I, I and I, I look at it like this, like when I got saved, I, I came out of really dark witchcraft and dealing with demons. I got yeah. into church and I was wanting to tell everybody. Like I was yeah. doing music, talking about Jesus. Like you couldn't, you couldn't shut me up about Jesus. Right. Because it changed my life. Like it brought me from a bad place to, to, to where I am now. And there was no way. And there's so many zealous young Christians who would just go, I mean, we'll, we'll go to like McDonald's and just start Jesus. He loves you. Or I remember like, Hey guys, I'm in love with a man. His yeah. name is Jesus. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and, um, I love being, the whole, Jesus is my homeboy. Right? <laughs> I mean, like we all would love him if he was we, here. I think we would. Right? Yeah, so, do, do, you know what the religious people disagree with that but i really think we would yeah i think we would um but just just as passionate as i was for that because it was a truth that changed my life i'm just as passionate about psychedelic research because sure. of what i see it doing to help people to yeah. it's curing depression it's helping people cope with depression uh people getting over the fear of dying All kinds of stuff, man. People are coming off of heroin addiction and through like a strong psilocybin encounter or ayahuasca. Um, I'm going to be vocal about that, too. The the same zeal that I had when my life was turned around for becoming a Christian for Jesus. I I wasn't silent then. Why would I be silent now? And I think many of you guys know what I'm talking about. You guys can can, can feel that. Like, and you're in a a place where you can't be vocal about that when you're dealing with the church realm. And so... You know, just just be warned, man, you know? Yeah. Wow. Wow. It's eye opening for me because I wasn't raised, you know, in a church. And so yeah. it's really for that me. world. <laughs> it's, yeah. It has its own world, man. I'm telling you. See, such limitation is uh, it works at my solar plexus. I'm going to be honest with you. Mm-hmm. It gets all tight. <laughs> no, me too. Now it does, man. Big time. Yeah. It's bad. Yeah. Like, it's yeah, bad. I have to go through that. And uh, 
but like I was saying too, um, before we went live, like a lot of people, they're mad that that we get to talk that I get to talk about psychedelics and Jesus <laughs> and and Jesus. They're like, nope. They get that's what makes them mad. Like that I'm mixing it too. So I know you can't mix it. And like we we we've we've coined the phrase. Uh, you know what I'm saying? My buddy Dano, um, you didn't you didn't let me in the club, so you can't kick me out. Like you didn't let who are you just because you disagree with me or you don't believe you like or or I would see posts online and say and they say yeah. Christians can't believe in astrology or Christians can't support Obama or whatever the case is like you want to bet yeah. Christians can't curse you want to bet Christians yeah. can't believe this you want to bet I am one you know what yeah. I'm saying How, who are you to to make up these rules that don't exist you know what I'm yeah. saying so and to put so many boundaries yeah and you're making yeah. it up as you go. These these are unspoken rules that you're making up. Yeah. You know? Well, it's crazy. I mean, not crazy. I know people. It is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was like, I don't want to offend anyone out there, but <laughs> and the reality is, a lot of these limitations that are set, those people that are setting those limitations are actually living that lie. <laughs> it's not. It's not that you can't. It's that they can't. Yeah. They can't follow Jesus and read a horoscope. They can't yeah. follow Jesus and be into astrology or astronomy or um, into Reiki or study Reiki. Like they can't do it. They, they, there's a disconnect there. But yeah. but I, I don't see that. And it, I, I don't see it at all. And I see it for me. What I bring to the table is that all of this stuff is in the Bible. Like it really is. There's some deep stuff in there that that it's weird that nobody even knows. Well, we're talking about divination. We're talking about planetary alignment and the That's spirits. All- civilization stuff that is exactly and that's what that is ancient (laughs) that text is old we try to interpret it with western christianity and try to make it fit into our lives i mean how did he do all of his miraculous healings he was an energy healer exactly it's the same thing yeah yeah yeah. pyramids i mean all of that stuff this is all ancient civilization which has everything to do with uh how the stars align and the planets align that's our communication base yeah Yep, and that's I'm, that's that, that's what led them, man. So when when I yeah. when when I got into looking at studying the prophets and how they operated, and they were called seers, uh-huh. and um, the word seers translated to stargazer, uh-huh. like the prophets were stargazers. So there was a comfort for me. Don't look at the stars, brother. No, the seers and prophets of the scriptures they gazed at the stars. You're I'm gonna go gaze gonna... at the star. Let me see what happens. Why are y'all yeah. telling me not to? First of all, let's see what happens. Yeah, you know? you're going back to your roots, you know, from from all your past lifetimes. Reading some of these comments again, I think. I yeah, can agree with the right are we in trouble? No, no, no. I'm just reading. I'm <laughs> just reading. Uh, no, Kenny, Kenny, uh, he's he's commenting again. He says he says mushrooms were made by God through Jesus for His purpose. I think it can be a great thing for the right person. The worst mm-hmm. mistake for others, probably. Yeah, uh, uh, set and setting. You don't yeah. want to. You don't want to go to a Marilyn Manson concert and eat a eat eat a, a bag of mushrooms. Oh know? yeah, no way. <laughs> I'm all about your environment, like yep. cause and music. People that have been gone on some bad trips, and I'm like, you did not check your environment. Yeah. Like that's like you kind of have to get romantic with your mushrooms. Like you've got to set the. No, tone, you do. Right? <laughs> you got to set you the tone. do. I had some beautiful music on before we went live, so I had to do it too. <laughs> Yeah, but, man, um, if that environment's not perfect, don't do it. Don't do it. Because, <laughs> like, we, we, cause we have, I've got a couple friends that we've, and these are Christian guys, right? We went out and we had a a, a men's retreat, and we all did a, a, a large dose of uh, yeah. um, mushrooms, and we had a, a beautiful encounter, life-changing encounter in, in the woods, and uh, awesome. Amazing. It was deep. Yeah. And um, so then the other guys, like, I have to learn from that stuff. Like I have, there's so much revelation that comes to me, so much downloads and, and yeah. vision quest. That's what it is. A vision quest. Yeah. The visions come and I'm like, it's going to take me weeks, if not months to unpack this information and apply it to my life. And that's why I did it to get okay. revelation about, about myself. And they were like, all right, bro, we're doing it again next weekend. I'm trying to get something I'm like what next you weekend, dude, I'm not gonna like, I respect it too much to do that, you know? And, um, Allow it to integrate into, like, and translate into the earth plane, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you have to integrate that yeah. information. Yeah. Sp- you sh- I mean, I mean, but who are we to make the rules and say you have to? No, as well? yeah, no, you're right. That's but, just for 
Listen, no, it, I it, it's 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 for it's for me too. It's for me too. I, I agree with that. Um, but the the, the per, one of the people who was with me, they went the following weekend and wanted to have the same kind of encounter with other people, and uh-huh. and their setting was different. Um, so he uh they they had a bunch of mushrooms. They in the middle of a neighborhood and uh-huh. in a, in a <laughs> suburb. They all take mushrooms. They got the door wide open, blasting music blaming yeah. on my add baby. <laughs> i haven't seen the video but i heard yeah. that the video is pretty crazy <laughs> uh-huh. and so they are they're on mushrooms and they're listening to that music and they're watching crazy i don't know if it's demons or weird stuff happening on the video and dude starts having a bad trip when the week before he had a beautiful life-changing encounter and then he tries to go back and the different people who are wanting to do strobe lights and blare, blare the music and the door is wide open. So there's the fear that the cops may come yeah, as well, yeah. you know, so it, it totally. And so he locked himself in the bathroom and he's like having a come to Jesus moment trying to figure out. But but those bad trips are, are teachers, too. Like the yeah. golden they're called the golden teachers for a reason. Um, uh-huh. Maybe the the teacher, the lesson is to not do that again. And focus on the set and focus on the people around you. You can't just let anybody be around you either, man. There's, and you're so sensitive to the spirits of and, and, and the vibration of the music that's being played. Like, like we, we can feel that anyway. Like a lot of empaths can feel music and just hearing the music will change oh, their yeah. mood and it just speaks to them. But on mushrooms, like it, you feel it on your body, like literally. And just oh, no, imagine. You can't feel that, yeah. Just it imagine if it's bad music, you know. Yeah, yeah. No, it is all about like, it just really opens you up energetically to have an experience. Yeah. But um, you are you are just wide open. It's like your it's almost like your skin is shed, you know, and your light body is just like out there seeing yeah. this energy. And you can you can see the energy moving when you're in that moment. Yeah. Yeah, you feel it like your senses are just wide open and so that's why environment's so important <laughs> we talked we talked about like um like because it was a bunch of christians so we're talking about how we were just amazed at the love of god like we were moved to tears just thinking about the love of god for us you know and um so it's one thing to know that god loves you it's another yeah. thing to feel it, feel it and right? i can feel it not just saying that but you yeah. can feel it you your heart feel shot, right? Yeah, yeah, man, it's overwhelming. It's beautiful. And so that's what it's about for me. When I, when I talk about this stuff, set and setting and do it in the right environment. And um, if it calls you, it calls you. If that, right. I, I say I'm not promoting it and I'm not telling anybody to do it, but that seems, f- for me, a seeker, that seems pretty irresistible to me. <laughs> yeah, well, you know? and just like, I mean, it is. It's something that Mother Earth created for us, you know, and I'm all about it. You know, there's a reason why yeah. it's, there's a reason why marijuana is out there. Like, you know, Mother Earth created it. And I'm not some like hippie dippy like Californian sitting out here. But <laughs> like if the Mother Earth created it, there's probably a pretty functional use for it, you know, and there's a reason why. But yeah, I've always I've been um, mushrooms are I, I'm a student of this earth. And so I do like experiencing everything so I can like yeah. have that lesson and like really. So now I have like the knowledge of talking through it. And mushrooms are by far my favorite like that. Mm -hmm. You know, if anyone wants to have some sort of experience and they're just starting out, I do feel like check your environment, but I do feel that it's, it can be a really beautiful experience. Awesome. Well, we just got a bunch of um, comments of gratitude. People says, uh, Crystal is a wise addition. Thank you, Truth, for the beautiful souls you share with us. So a lot of people resonating with your work. Go ahead and and share share your links because you do classes and you're you're a teacher as well, teaching people how to how to how to walk in their their own God given psychic abilities and how, how to access those realms. Go ahead and share your information, how people can check you out. Thank you so much. And thank you so much, everyone. Oh, my gosh. I'm so grateful for you all listening. So so thank you. My website is crystalsunshinepsychicservices.com. And you can find I have a psychic academy on there. I do actually a whole year long program of psychic development. Um, I just started that in the beginning of January, not too late to join. Um, and then I also even do like a four week class 
where, and these are all phone programs, you know, in our digital world, we could be anywhere in the world. And so I find that that's the format that works best. And um, I even have like a four week program. It's just two hours each week where I teach you how to completely open up your third eye. And by the end of the four weeks, you're actually learning how to read and move energy. Um, it's really beautiful. And then I have like a women's intuition class and, you know, I've got a bunch of fun stuff that I'm always creating, but um and then uh, I've got great services as well. You know, I do like uh, spiritual introductions where I like introduce you to your spiritual team and I do custom meditations and I do psychic readings and clairvoyant readings. So check my website out, crystalsunshinepsychicservices.com. And you can also find me on Facebook at Crystal Sunshine Psychic Services and Crystal Sunshine Psychic Academy. So please friend me. Please like me. <laughs> please let's spread the word together. <laughs> yeah, you guys do that. Check out our stuff. Make sure you support. Um, I really believe in the people who come on my show. They have something to bring to the table. Um, if you guys want to see Crystal come back on as a guest, make sure you uh, like this video, share it out, and let me know in the comments if you guys want to see her back on. So help me book some stuff. And I know there's so much more to talk about that we didn't that we didn't even get into. And there's so much, so many notes that I had. Yeah, we could like sit here and talk all day. <laughs> yeah, and I would keep going, but I have another show scheduled coming right on. So we'll have to do it again. That's okay. My bulldog's like, I gotta go to the. <laughs> so, All right, my friend. Thank, th yeah, man. Thank, thanks for coming on. Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate you. Oh my gosh, I appreciate you, and I appreciate all your listeners. Thank you so much. Hopefully, until next time. Yeah, we'll do it again. <laughs> Sounds good, Derek. Have a great right, day. You too. Bye bye. Bye. Crystal Sunshine, everybody. Um, great show. Awesome show. I got another one. It's supposed to be uh interviewing Kaylee, Keenan Kaylee. Um, he was a Christian rapper, gone to the dark side. This should be an interesting conversation. I looked up to that guy years ago. Um, I don't know where he's at right now. I don't know what type of interview this is going to be. I don't know if he um, is doing it as a gimmick to reach people. Maybe he'll, he'll say that, I think, probably. Maybe he still is a Christian. Maybe he still believes the stuff he believes. I don't know. But Within the next 20 minutes, we're going to go live interviewing Kaylee. Uh, I did a song with him years ago. I did. Um, so we got a song called This Is How We Ride. Really good song, actually. One of my favorites when I was doing gospel rap. So check that one out. This Is How We Ride. True Seeker featuring Kaylee and Goodwill, I believe it is. Um, good song. So with that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. You guys catch me back. I'll be live here in a minute. Also, if you're listening to this on YouTube, make sure you subscribe on the podcast in. Uh, if you have a if you have an iPhone, you have the podcast app already on there. So just click the link in the in the description. It says sub subscribe with the podcast or to the podcast. Even if you have an Android, there's a link for you guys there. Do that for me. That will mean the world. If you guys want to support my show, if you want to uh, see me continue to do this and bring more content and keep it coming, uh, please support me on Patreon. You get a bunch of cool stuff. We're going to be doing the School of the Mystics every Thursday night. It's going to be online training and discipleship. Uh, we're going to be doing activation. I'm excited about it. I've always wanted to do it. Um, I'm able to see the um, potential in a lot of people, a lot of people that I work with, a lot of people I get messages from. And uh, I don't want it to stop there with just a message. I don't, you know what I'm saying? I have to take it to the next level. So um, we're going to do it hands on and it's going to be candid and, um, it's going to be private. So if you guys just need somebody to talk to, if you guys, we're going to do it. It's going to be, it's going to be fun. Community. Patreon.com backslash True Seeker. Uh, sign up at any level and there you'll get access. It'll be on the website. Uh, you can go to School of the Mystics, School of the Mystics dot net. Um, and then you can also just go to TrueSeeker.com and click on School of the Mystics to get access. We'll do it Thursday nights, 7 p.m. And uh, it's going to be good. With that, I'm going to say peace and shalom. I love each and every one of y'all, and I'll be back soon. Peace, peace. Thanks for, thanks for rocking with me. Peace. Well, that does it for this episode, folks. To hear more episodes of the Truth Seeker podcast, head over to truthseeker.com. And if you're wanting to support the show and get rewards, go to our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash truthseeker.